Hello and welcome to this microwave engineering lecture titled Rectangular Waveguide Cavity Resonators. In this lecture, we'll look at the resonant frequencies of a rectangular cavity and we'll finish by designing a rectangular cavity resonator. Microwave resonators can also be constructed from closed sections of waveguide. The radiation loss from an open-ended waveguide can be significant, so these resonators are usually short-circuited at both ends, forming a closed box or a cavity. Electric and magnetic energy is stored within the cavity enclosure, and power is dissipated in the metallic walls of the cavity, as well as in the dielectric material that may fill the cavity. Coupling to a cavity resonator may be by a small aperture or a small probe. There are many different resonant modes for a cavity resonator, as shown in these animations. Where you can see in this animation is the Y component of the electric field of a TE101 resonant mode for a rectangular cavity. And in this animation, we can see the Y component of the TE102 resonant mode. Let's now look first at a picture of the rectangular cavity that we will use to derive the resonant frequencies. This device is located at the origin of the x, y, z axis. The length along the x axis is A, the length along y is B, and the length along z is given by D. And the material or filling inside the cavity is given by mu and epsilon. The transverse electric fields EX and EY of the TEMN and TMMN of the rectangular waveguide mode is given by this expression, where little e XY is the transverse variation of the mode and A plus and A minus are arbitrary amplitudes for the forward and backward traveling waves respectively. The propagation constant of the M and Nth TE or TM mode is given by this expression. Beta mn equals k squared minus m pi over a squared minus n pi over b squared, where k is the wave number given by this. Now for the cavity, we apply the conditions for perfectly conducting walls at z equals 0 and z equals d. For z equals 0, we have that the transverse field is equal to 0 and a plus equals minus a minus. And at z equals d, the transverse field etxyd equals minus little e xy times a plus times 2j sine beta mn n d equals 0. The only non-trivial solution for this expression is when beta d equals l pi, where l equals 1, 2, 3, etc. This means that the cavity must be an integer multiple of a half wavelength guide at resonant frequency. No non trivial solutions are possible for other lengths or for frequencies other than the resonant frequencies. Now we can define a resonance wave number. For the rectangular cavity, it is defined by this expression square root of m pi over a squared plus n pi over b squared plus l pi over d squared. We can refer to the TEMNL or TMMNL resonant mode of the cavity, where the standing wave pattern variations correspond to the x direction given by m, the y direction given by n, and the z direction given by l. Now, the resonant frequency is given by this expression FMNL equals CKMNL over. 2 pi times the square root of mu r times epsilon r, which is equal by this expression. For a cavity where b is less than a and a less than d, the dominant resonant mode is the TE101 mode. The dominant TM resonant mode is the TM110 mode. Now let's look at the unloaded Q of the TE10L mode. First, we will calculate the unloaded Q with lossy dielectric filling but perfectly conductor walls, and it's given 
by this expression, which is 2 omega times we over pd equals to epsilon prime over epsilon over prime, which is equal to 1 over the loss tangent. The unloaded Q with lossy conducting walls but lossless dielectric is given by this expression, 2 omega naught we over pc, which is given by this long expression. And thus, the total unloaded Q is equal to the inverse of the sum of 1 over QC plus 1 over QD. Now let's look at an example of a design of a rectangular cavity resonator. A rectangular waveguide cavity is made from a piece of copper WR-187H band waveguide with dimensions A equal to 4.755 cm and B equals 2.215 cm. The cavity is filled with polyethylene, which is given with, by epsilon r equals 2.25 and loss tangent equals 0 0.0004. If the resonance is to occur at a frequency of 5 GHz, find the required length d and the resulting unloaded Q for the L equals 1 and L equals 2 resonant modes. We first calculate the wave number k at 5 GHz, which is equal to 2 pi f times the square root of epsilon r over c, and it's equal to this. In a rectangular cavity with the dimensions provided, the dominant mode is the TE101 mode, so m equals 1 and n equals 0. Then we can find the resonance for l equals 1 and 2, and it's given by this. Now for L equals 1, D is equal to 2.20 centimeters and for L equals 2, D is equal to 4.4 centimeters. Now we are ready to calculate the unloaded Q. We first calculate the Q due to conductor loss, given by this long expression where eta is given by 377 over square root of epsilon r for polyethylene. For L equals 1, the Q due to conductor loss is given by this, 8403, and for L equals 2, it's equal to 11,898. Now the Q due to dielectric loss is just given by 1 over the loss tangent. It's equal to 2500. And it's the same for both L equals 1 and 2. Now we can calculate the total unloaded Qs for L equals 1, which is given by this, 1,927, and L equals 2 equal to 2,065. 